Hey guys, it's Falafel92, and today we'll be discussing JRR Token. It's been about a year since I've reviewed some of his works, so we're going to get back into it. And since he passed away 50 years ago in September of 1973 at age 82, let's, you know, just get into it. So in regards to his bio biographical movie that came out within the last five or so years, I figure, you know... I'm not much of a biography guy, however, I still really enjoyed it and enjoyed his backstory, you know, time at university and, you know, some of his Catholic upbringing, in addition, him being involved in World War One, since, you know, he fought for Great Britain, even though, you know, South Africa was part of Great Britain at the time of his birth. So, but yeah, otherwise, as much as I'm not big on biographies, I still enjoyed it. I have never personally seen the animated Hobbit movie, nor have I seen the animated Lord of the Rings. I just never saw either of them because, you know, they're 50 years old. I just never personally watched them. And so I had a video game on the Wii that was based around Aragorn. I don't remember much about it, so we're going to move on from it, even though I would love to talk about it. It's just been years since I played that. In regards to LEGO Lord of the Rings, I have never personally played that game either, nor have I played Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. I would very much love to play them. I just don't feel like, you know, doing dealing with them, though. And if I do, I'll probably talk about, about it later on, just, you know, in a separate video. And so, in regards to LEGO The Hobbit, I thought it was an alright game. I mean, I enjoyed the world building and how faithful it was to the, to the actual movies and the book. However, I didn't, you know, personally care for how they completely refused to acknowledge the Battle of the Five Armies. They should have either have just waited until after that movie came out, or, you know, maybe just released the game, released that sec section of the game as DLC. That would have been awesome. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Lord of the Rings, I absolutely enjoy good satire. I just, you know, it's kind of hard to cover a 1,200-page book. And, you know, in turn, I get it. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I like good satire. And, you know, I like shorter books. Sometimes, you know, sometimes comedy books don't have to be super duper long either. So, yeah. Now, in regards to Unfinished Tales and the Silmarillion, if you adored The Hobbit and The Fellowship and the Ring and The Two Towers and The Return of the King, absolutely read those two books. I highly recommend it. It expands on a lot of what Tolkien was establishing within The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. And if it weren't for his son Christopher, it would have never have, you know, he wouldn't have gotten even more popular after Tolkien died. So, yeah. You know, you can thank his late son, Christopher, for doing that. So, yeah. The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings are both very solid books. Like, they show a lot of growth and development. And, yeah. I mean, The Hobbit isn't too meaty, you know, given it's a kid's book. It's not designed to be super duper long, just like, you know, Lord of the Rings. The Lord of the Rings... Yeah, The Lord of the Rings is a very great series, though. I absolutely enjoy it. You know, I mean, it's on the meteor side. However, you know, there are books like, you know, the Bible or uh, the sand, you know, stuff like that. I've read those and those are just as meaty as The Lord of the Rings. So it's, I'm not bothered by it. Now, The Hobbit films, Unexpected Journey, I agree, is kind of on the longer side. However, I still very much enjoyed it, and I still thought it was a great film nonetheless. Desolation of Smog, I thought it was alright. I mean, yeah, it has a clear goal in mind, but it also just started completely covering everything you don't either don't care about or, you know, it's being exposited by characters you don't either shouldn't be there or shouldn't aren't weren't created in by Tolkien at all. So like, you know, Legolas, he shouldn't be present there at all. 
And yet they made it a case of being like, oh, you remember or Orlando Bloom being in Lord of the Rings? Yeah, he's back for The Hobbit too. You know, you like the Ant-Man and the Wasp? Well, hey, you know, we got Evangeline Lilly because... And again, they're, they're both great in this film trilogy. Don't get me wrong, I'm just saying. I just feel like their presence is kind of inappropriate. And it's especially inappropriate when their characters are taking, you know, vital scenes from Martin Freeman. And it's like, this is not the dwarves' story. It is not the elf story. It's not human beings' story. It's the Hobbit. It's Martin Freeman's story. Quit taking it away from him. And it's the same thing with the Hobbit, the Battle of the Five Armies. It's like, you know, just completely taking it away from Bilbo for no reason. And also that film, as much as I enjoy it, again, like I say, it, this book is not that long. And so they just take, you know, a, a couple of chapters and just drag it out for like a full two and a half hours. I, mean, I know it's a two hour film, but still, you know, it's just literally 30 minutes of them hanging out not doing much, then an hour and a half of them fighting, then the funeral for both men, elves, and dwarves, and then Bilbo finally comes back to the Shire because he has nothing to do. And yeah. And now we get into the Lord of the Rings, which is the much better of the two trilogies, at least the film-wise. And I, again, as I say, there's a lot of meat in the Lord of the Rings, and actually it manages to deliver pretty well for the most part. I mean, like the way Sam, I'm sorry, Frodo treats Sam in regards to Gollum, that rubbed me the wrong way because he's not, Frodo in no sh way, shape or form defends Gollum at all. And yet film versions like, oh, hey, you know, hey, you know, Jonah Hill, have him, you know, defend, you know, yeah, just defend Gollum for instead of Sam because that's not what happens in the book, though. And also cutting uh, Solomon, the Sor Sorman from uh, the third movie. I, I just didn't care for how that got handled in Return of the King. Otherwise, though, Lord of the Rings is one of the few film adaptations I would say is as good or better than, you know, the book. I, w I don't think I would take it as far as saying it's better than the book, but I agree it's pretty solid, so yeah. And so overall, yeah. Just covering all the Lord of the Rings books, movies, The Hobbit, Hobbit movies, expanded media, and you know, parodies and video games and all that, so yeah. It's been Fantasy Friday with Level 92 and JRR Token.